reading from the book of the prophet Sirach. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in detail. Forgive your neighbor's injustice. Then, when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days. Set enmity aside. Remember death and decay and cease from sin. Think of the commandments. Hate not your neighbor. Remember the Most High's covenant and overlook faults. The Word of the Lord. Our first reading for this Sunday comes from the book of Sirach. And I think all of us can find this reading with a lot of uh, significance or relevance to our lives. And uh, we would also be able to relate to what uh, this portion of the book of Sirach is presenting to us for our reflection. It's all about forgiveness. We all want to be forgiven. When we know we have done something wrong, we have come to realize it. We want to be forgiven by God or by people whom we have hurt. But then what is the connection between our desire to be forgiven and our readiness to forgive others? Ah, that is a different matter altogether. We want to be forgiven, but do we want to forgive others? The book of Sirach tells us that there is an intimate connection between forgiving others and receiving pardon from God. In fact, the connection is so close that Sirach intimates that one condition for us to receive God's forgiveness is our act of forgiving others too. In fact, a painful question is brought to our attention. How can you approach God? How can you ask God to pardon your sins when you are not able to do the same thing towards your neighbors who have hurt you and who have also approached you for pardon? How could you do that? And it seems that our healing from our own sins can come only if we are willing to forgive others and to be an instrument of healing of their sinfulness as well. Sirach cannot put this contrary events together. Refusal to forgive others, yet expecting God to forgive me. Now, why, why is Sirach Seem, uh, why, does he, why does he seem to be quite uh, uh, nonchalant or even uh, commonsensical in this? Is it really obvious that we should forgive others so that God could forgive us? Well, Sirach gives this answer. You are a sinner too. And who could understand a sinner? Sirach expects us, sinners, to understand sinners better. We should be able to resonate with sinners who feel guilt, remorse, and who want to be forgiven. Why is it that God, who is sinless, it is God who understands sinners who want to be forgiven? And we, who are ourselves sinners, cannot understand the plea of our fellow sinners for forgiveness. So Sirach is telling us, you know as a sinner 
what the other sinners need. So why, why will you be stingy towards them when they ask for mercy, when you yourself ask for mercy from God? And so Sirach tells us, remember that life is short. Remember the ends of your day. Would you want to spend the rest of your lives, no matter how short or long it is, harboring any grudge? If you want at the end of your life to be forgiven by God, now that your life is short, and every life is short, every day we are coming closer to death. So as we want God's mercy to come to us, as we approach death, then let us also be generous in giving mercy to others as we move towards the end of our lives. Life is short. Think of what is good. Cease to do evil. Cease sinning. And as you expect God to be merciful to you, then be merciful to others too.